all right everybody welcome to another video a little unusual video today because we don't do a lot of body work on the channel that there is the passenger front door for an 04 kia rio cinco of course it'll also fit a kia rio four door and this is the replacement door for the gray kia that we did the uh, underneath lines on earlier this year i got this back in november problem with the other door is the window only goes down halfway and it gets stuck so i've tried to fix that door i think it was in an accident at one point and they got it all messed up so we're not going to mess with that door no more so what we got to do is in a in a little bit we're going to be putting this door on the kia well we don't need the tinted window so we're going to run the power window motor we're going to try to get that window to come down so i can get it out of the door uh, i've never done a kia before so you're going to learn with me on this one i know there's not a whole lot of video support for kias at least this vintage uh the door came off rather easily i remember that um it is a little heavy of course because it's a door so I've got my jump box here that we're going to use to power the window motor. I got my um, leads in there that we're going to use to hook to the motor and then my tools right there because we're going to try to salvage the power window track because we need that part in this door. We're going to just, we're basically going to get this thing prepped for paint because we got to paint it gray. Uh, we don't have a key to that door lock so we're going to take the door lock out. We're going to reuse the one that's already in the car. Uh, if we can take the door handle off, we're going to take the door handle off. We're definitely going to get the window out. And so let's see what kind of goofiness we can get into here. So let me get you set up to where you can see the table pretty good. I think you can see it really good from there. Oh yeah, you can see it really good from here. This door is heavy, so if you're doing this and you have an assistant, have them help you with this. I don't have an assistant, so I'm doing it all by myself. It's very painful, let me tell you. So. All right, so we're going to get this door up on the table. We're going to put the front down. So we're going to rotate this door around so we can get to the back side. It is hard to maneuver. There's no place to grab. All right. Looks like it was... Uh, a really crappy tent job so i'm thinking if we uh if we're good enough where we can get the glass out we can reuse the glass later on so as you can see i've already got the plastic pulled down so we've got a couple bolts down here we got to deal with so let me see how this window all right so i think we need to get to our uh window controls you're right here and we need to see which way this window needs to go down and we're going to try a couple different things here all right so we need to get our test leads hooked up and that's going to be our window control so on a two wire system the way that they operate the power windows is that uh one they basically just reverse the polarity on the wire so you got a power and a ground so if it's ground controlled to go down then they're going to put power to ground if it's not then they're going to put power to power and it's going to go up or down but when you you need these to do it <clears throat> I wish I had a switch I could hook to, but I don't have a switch. Nothing this small anyway. I don't have any uh, Kia connectors because I didn't think that far ahead when I took the door out. I was just so excited I saw the door that I just had to have it. <clears throat> Try your best not to make your wires touch when you put these together. If you have to, stuff a piece of cardboard in between them to kind of keep the tools from touching. If he's touch, you're gonna have a problem. See, we're gonna have a problem with it touching, so I need to uh, find a way to split the. Yeah, let's see what I got in my bag here. 
This will work. Old dead gel pack. Stuff that in between here and keep them from touching. That's all you need to do is just keep them from touching. There you go. Just like that. And then we'll figure out which way our motor goes by we'll turn on our jump box here. And we'll just kind of touch wires and Get lucky that we uh, get the right combination here. Let me turn this on real quick. All right, so we got our negative hooked up. Let's see if this is the right combination or if we got to switch the wire direction. All right, that's up. So we need to switch the wire direction. We need to go down so we got to put our positive to negative and our negative to positive and we have a window going down all right we got to hold on a minute because we got make sure that our wiring don't get caught up in the window track all right we got to scoot this down bit more I think so I can see what the window looks like see how you do that pretty cool huh yeah you go nice and slow and you won't break nothing we got our window down so now I can look at it and see how it goes together all right we got two screws here I think that's it Yep, that's it. That's all holding this window in. So we got to roll the window up a little bit so I can get to those screws. So to do that, we just switch our polarity around. So to go up, you're going to put the two negatives together. To go down, you're going to put the positive and negative together. That's how that works. We got to go up a little bit. So we're going to put our polarities like they should be. We're going to go up a little bit. Oh, I got to turn the power on. All right. And there it is. That's how easy that is. So now we're going to unhook our motor. We're going to get in our toolbox. We got to get 10 millimeter socket should take this window out. We got to get it off this track. And then we'll be good to go we're not going to take the track out because we need to leave it in the car because we're going to take the new window that's in the gray door and we're going to put it in the blue door but we got to get this window out so that we can prep the door for paint we can leave the track in the door because we're going to uh we'll figure it out when we get there Those clamps aren't very tight, so we can probably use the good old-fashioned Phillips screwdriver on it since that's what it calls for. So. Just want to take it nice and easy. I think this window tilts forward to get it out. I'm not real sure. We're going to find out in a minute. At least we know we got full travel on our window motor. On the other car, it goes like halfway down and then it starts getting really tight on the glass. So I'm thinking the inner structure of the door has been compromised. And whoever tried to repair it didn't do a good enough job on it because it, it jams up real bad. All right, so we got our window loose. Let's see, we can tilt it sideways like that and the glass should come out. So I'm gonna walk around the other side of the table, receive that glass and pull it out. All right, and just carefully pull the glass out, just like that. And there you have it, folks. There's the glass out of your Kia door. Now, 
he had did a couple different options. They had your regular pane glass, which is what this looks like on the outside. You can see the horrible tint job on this one. So later on, if we need a piece of window glass for that door, for whatever reason, we've got one. We'll just uh, rip the tent off of it and we'll be good to go. So we got to put this back over here on the other bench. I'll find a nice safe place to store that. Okay, so we're going to leave the door in this position. That way we can get the new, we can get the window in here and then we won't have to worry about uh, trying to adjust it because this is perfect for what we need it for. So we're going to put these two screws in the window glass because our glass is going to have its own screws. Okay, when you're storing window glass, we're going to move you down here a little bit. When storing window glass, you want to wrap it up, okay? You want to wrap it up in uh, blankets or whatever you want. Store it flat where nothing else is going to lay on top of it. If you've got stuff like in your shed, like old boxes and stuff, and you're not moving those boxes for a while, you can, if as long as it's stable, you can rest them up on the boxes and you'll be fine. So, all right, so we're going to be pulling out the door handle. Or, yeah, we're going to pull the door handle next. Let's see, I think that's all we got to do. Oh, we gotta get that door lock out. So let me get you in a good position and we'll get started. All right, now you can see the door lock and the door handle. We're gonna uh, probably put the door handle away in case the one in the gray door breaks. So this door handle will come out and be stored with the glass. And of course we gotta get the door, latch at door, door lock out. This doesn't have a, a latch in it because we're gonna reuse uh, the latch out of the gray door. Basically what we have here is just a skin, okay? Just a basic shell of a door with the exception of the power window motor and the regulator. We're going to keep that. But everything else like this here, that's going to go up in, in storage. And this in here, if later on we need to get it rekeyed for the car, we can, we've got a lock. So we got a little bit of parts here, um, not too bad though. I think these are gonna be 10 millimeter. And if you've never seen me pull one of these latches before, you're gonna see it today, cause it's really cool. I might have to go get the big blue screwdriver to get that slide off of there, but let's get started. All right, that's gonna be, those bolts are a 10 millimeter socket. So we're gonna, we already got our 10 out because we tested it on that window over there. So we're going to get this going here. And then also in this video, I'm going to show you where your paint code lives on your car. We're going to walk over to the Kia and we're going to get the paint code out of it. Yeah, these are plastic handles, so you don't want these to be very tight. And if they are tight, then be prepared for some breakage. You'll see why in a minute when I pull this door handle out. Yeah, these just should be just snug. Okay, we're talking like inch pounds snug. Okay, I'm gonna move you off the door, set you over here, and you can probably see what we're gonna do next. If you can see down here where my fingers are at, you're in good shape. If you can't, then I'm sorry, but uh, I'm gonna pick up the door, and then the door handle will rotate out. At least it's supposed to. There we go. Comes right out, just like this. And there's our door handle right there. That's all it is. And you see how it's all plastic here and it's got these uh, metal bolts that go through it. It's all plastic. There's no metal in here except for the hardware and the spring. That's metal spring. And then same thing we did on the door. We're gonna take our hardware, or on the window, I mean. Same thing on the window. We're gonna put our hardware on here because our door comes with hardware. So, we'll set this off to the side. I'm gonna go put this by that piece of glass. All 
right, so now we got our window. I got our handle out. Looks like we might have to pull our trim piece down here too. Those, these are, uh, let me see. Can you see where I'm at? All right, so on this trim right here, these are push tabs. I'll show you how they work. You find your most decrepit pair of pliers. These are mine. And where they, where they flare out, take your pliers. These work better with long handled needle nose, which I finally found mine. So ironically, they were in this Kia that we're working on. Just take them, squeeze them together and then push down. To do it correctly and effectively, we're gonna to have to sit the door upright on the ground. So when we get done taking the door latch out, which you could probably do like this, just take your pliers and just kind of let's see if we can get you over here i don't want you to miss this ow that hurt get your favorite pair of pliers these are mine grab it up up, up here on that tab right there and just kind of pull it out like that Sometimes uh, if it gets stuck, you can pry it out with a pair of pliers too, or a screwdriver. Then you want to pick your door up. You might go flying. I hope you don't, but in case you do, I'm warning you ahead of time. Make sure you got your uh, safety belt on, everybody. You pick up your door, push it through the back side, and then you reach underneath the door, flip it to the side. There's your door lock right there. Looks like your basic uh, door lock out of like a, uh, oh, like a GM lock. Cords are a little bit more ornate. Chrysler maybe, I don't know. And then you're going to take your lock and you're going to just line it up on there. And then that's your door lock assembly right there. So we got the door lock out, we got the handle out. Okay, so the next part... Oh, we can go ahead and unplug our uh, little device we made for our power window motor. All right, so the next step we got to do is we need to get this thing laying on its back because it's on its front right now. We need to be able to get to these little push tabs on the back. So what I'm thinking I might do is set this on the ground to where as soon as I push these tabs in, now I'll show you what we're doing here. As soon as I push these tabs in down here, it's going to push that piece of trim out. And uh, we don't want to break these tabs off. So I'm going to go get my long handled needle nose, get this sitting on the ground, and then I'm going to show you how to take this trim off without breaking it. All right, so I'm not sure how well this is going to come out on, on the video, but uh, you can see this little black tab right here. It's basically a push tab like the rest of them. So these tabs are used on a wide array of vehicles. So not just Kia, but I think GM uses them a lot. Honda uses them. And I think Ford's used them from time to time. The goal here is not to get the tabs broke because you need these tabs to hold this on here. Otherwise, you're self-tapping it like we had to on the Kia. So from start, you find your farthest end, which is way over here by the door lock. Sometimes you can get at it through the door lock if it's not too far back. This one is though, so we can't get to it from the door lock. And you just take your needle nose, you squeeze the end of the tab, and depending on how it wants to run, you can push it out the, out the back. You'll hear it click like it just did. Then you want to be ready on the back or on the other side. To kind of push it out. It's, it's a little difficult to get it out when you start, but after you get a rhythm down, it works pretty easily. I think what I'm going to do is grab a screwdriver maybe so 
sometimes you can put your finger in here and you can push on it to get it started and then it pushes right out i'll show you let me see here there's this one right here it's a little easier to get to you just want to push it out to where it's no longer grabbing keep in mind though you're going to have some adhesive on the back side of this too so you're going to have to push to break the adhesive free too that's why you want the screwdriver on the front like this and then you want to grab a hold of it on the front and you want to Make sure it clears on the front. Once it clears on the front, you're good to go. You can move to the next one. Let me go grab a screwdriver real quick here. You just want to take this part nice and slow because if you try to force it, you're going to break those ears off these clips here and then you're not going to have it to use later on. So get in here. As soon as you push down to where it releases the clip, then you take your screwdriver from the front side and pry it away, and then you're good to go. See? And then that one's out. You got a whole tension on it because it's probably going to carry a couple more of these with it, so you want to that one through yep I can feel the adhesive all right there's those two broke loose then you may have one that's on an adjuster like this one here that you can see in the camera this one here is on an adjuster so you want to kind of push out on that and then pry out on your adhesive strip see how that one popped through and you got to do that all the way down and depending on the vehicle you're working on, you may have one, but you'll have no more than probably 10, depending on the model and the trim that you're trying to take off. When you get to a certain point where you don't need the screwdriver anymore, then you reposition yourself and you reach around from the, reach around and then just kind of pull back on it until it pops through the other side. And then in a minute, I'm gonna turn the door around and you're gonna see what it looks like. You want to push these through nice and carefully so you can reuse them. Very delicate operation this is. All right, we'll put it over here a little bit because that's where we're at. You can reposition yourself over on this side. And then when we get done with this, we'll go over to the car we're fixing and I'll show you the uh, consequences of not doing this correctly. All right, so we got one that we just pushed through. You got one over in this hole down here. I don't know if you can see this or not. And we push that one through. And then we got to pull on our trim strip till it pops through the other side. And there's usually one on the very end, but I don't know if this one has it or not. That's usually the one you break is the one you can't see. So let me see if I can find it. Yep, there's a big jumbo one sitting right back in this. There's two of them right back in this corner no they're usually the ones you break because you don't see them these you're going to have to this is why you're using long handle needle nose and you got to get back in here you got to these are you can't really squeeze these down you just got to kind of I have to get the long screwdriver on it and push down on him from the top of the door. Let me go get my long screwdriver and we'll see if that works. All right, so we got our screwdriver. We're gonna try, we can get in there a little bit better than with our pliers. There's a, the tab we gotta push down. Don't think it's got one on the bottom. I just heard it click so we can probably pull through on it. Once you hear it click, you're pretty much golden at that point. I'm trying not to break these. 
I would like to reuse them if at all possible. This one down here is a bit of a pain up. Oh, I think I just broke that one I was trying not to break. We'll find out in a minute when we pull our door apart. Oh, we broke both of them, I think. Yep, they snapped off. Dang it. I was trying not to do that. Well, let me turn the door around and you'll see what's going on here. We might be able to epoxy them back together, but I highly doubt it. Probably gonna be a screw-in job. Let me pull the door back and let me show you what we were doing. Those two on the end are the ones that everybody breaks. I'm not surprised I broke them too. Alright. So this is what we're doing. Okay. This is what we're doing. Alright, there's uh, one that you cannot get to. This one right here. That's in the uh, actual door. That one's always a slide. Okay. So that one usually, you, you won't break this one. And then we got the ones that we pushed out. Here's the ones that we were trying to get out and they broke off. Those two right there. Guaranteed every time you're gonna lose those two. Cause there's no way to really get them off. The one on the end, that's a slide in. So we just have to slide it back in to that plastic and then pop it back on and we're good to go. This is what you're getting at right here. These are your clips. Get this back so you can see it better. These are your clips, and then of course you got a little bit of uh, double-sided tape around the outside. That keeps the moisture from rusting this out in here. And then these are the two that we broke off. They're broke off on the other car too, but fortunately because there's no way to get those out without breaking them off. Uh, so now I'll take a uh, probably a the claw end of a claw hammer in there and I'll just get in there and I'll just pry those out or if I have a trim tool strong enough to do it I'll use a trim tool on and I'll just pry those out so we got our trim piece off this piece here can be used later on if uh, if it's determined that the gray piece that we have on the car right now is beyond reasonable use we can always scuff this up and paint it it's plastic so we're gonna have to use plastic and vinyl paint we can paint this up and we'll be good to go there. Uh, the weather stripping, I'm not gonna mess with it too much because unless it slides up real easy, I'm gonna leave it be. Uh, same thing with the um, this door trim right here. Um, it looks fine, so I'm gonna leave it be. It's the same color on the other car. So let's go show you some Kia stuff. I'm going to walk over to the other car. I'm going to show you where your paint code's at. I'm not going to... Well, you can Google your paint code. Just put in Kia, like the year of your car. And put in Kia, Rio, and then the two-digit. It's an alphanumeric paint code. So it's going to be like a number and a letter. And then it'll tell you the type of color it is. And if you go to a paint website, like maybe PPG or I think 3M might also do it, they probably will give you the formula and you can take that to your local paint store uh, that does automotive paint, not house paint. I know somebody's going to be asking specifics out there, so that's why I popped it in there. And have them mix you up enough to get your job done. All right, so you have on this little uh, tag right here get in there real good so you can see it okay and that's your trim that's going to be um i think that's your interior so this car's got the gray interior so trim oh is probably going to be your gray interior this up here is your paint coat so on this car it's v9 victor niner um also on this uh vin tag you can also see the data manufacturer this is important if you're dealing with what I call mid-year switch, where um, you go to the part store for a specific part, 
and it says before like 10 of 03 and then after 10 of 03 you're going to look at your vent your that tag right there and it's going to tell you which one you need so this is what they call an early 04 okay 04 ran from june of 03 to june of 04 and then from june of 04 to june of 05 is the 05 model and then after that they were discontinued so this is our inside of our door and what i wanted to show you here was we're going to reuse all this and then we need to we're going to reuse our mirror because our mirror is fine and then our trim strip this is our trim strip now it looks like it's in good shape somebody put a big old bolt in the front of it that's not necessary but uh if we have a hole in our new door for that we're going to use it uh you see right here where they tried to patch it so i think what we're going to end up doing is we're going to probably take our blue piece we're going to paint it and put it back on except where the uh, two clips broke on the end we're going to have to probably uh probably get a self tapper through it or since i can put a nut and bolt back in there i might just do that get a short bolt with a nut put it in there and then paint it silver like the car you won't even notice it i don't like to fabric cobble in that regard but you know it is what it is you have to make it work otherwise what happens is because that's at the forward end of the door wind is going to hit that in the right way and it's going to rip that entire piece off your car and you don't want that so we're going to do the best we can to re-secure it back on the vehicle and i was trying very very hard not to um break those two pieces but uh well you can only do is what you can what you got so let's see if we can pull those two pieces out with just a screwdriver and a pair of needle nose so and then of course we got to sand it and primer it and everything else so i've got to go to the paint store with the paint code and get the paint code for it uh, as far as that back slidey piece i'm not going to get that out i don't think i'm gonna try i'm gonna try to get that little square piece out of there but if i can't get it to come out then i'm not going to be too worried about it because i can always um it's going to be hidden by this trim, so it might be okay. So let's see this. Looks like it's part of a bigger piece. Let me see if this center comes out. Let's see what this... Oh, that's encouraging. Let's see if we can pull this little square piece out of here and see how it's constructed yeah see you can get this little square piece out which is what we were trying to do in the beginning but I think that little square piece had to stay in and I think the way that that comes apart is it's got a piece in the center we were supposed to push on We'll find out in a minute when we get this piece of square out of here. I want to see how this is constructed. It looks like it might be like a plastic rivet. Which is common on these cars. It is. It's a plastic rivet. We're going to have to push that through the bottom of the door. It's a plastic rivet. So we're gonna have to see if we can get it to come out. Eh, it wants to break off, so we're just gonna have to break it off. It's heartbreaking because I wanted to see how this comes apart. Because uh, if I come across these again in the future, I want to know how to get it out without breaking it. But it looks like we're not gonna have that opportunity today. Ah. Grab a pair of pliers here, see if we can get the crown. Well, that ain't very strong. 
Yeah, I think it, that is. Yep, that's what that. Oh, look at that. It had a screw in the end of it. If we had just unscrewed it, we could have popped it out. That figures. I'll get the bits out of the door later. Yep, screw. Now, how are you supposed to get that screw out when you can't even access it from the back? Let me show you something. Let me show you. Okay, Kia, explain this to me. There is no way. See, look. There is no way you can even get a screwdriver back in there. So how do you want, how do you expect us to get that out of there? Come on, Kia. Get better with your jobs now. We're not going to pull that reinforcement out of there just to get two tiny little screws out of it that's uh not happening but uh all right so we got this door ready for we got to get it primered for paint i'm not going to worry about taking the strips off the back here um if it does get paint on it it's not going to harm nothing i might pop the trim off later on when we get ready to actually do the paint this is your, uh, oh, I forget what they call that. It's your bar for your uh, striker door, or not striker, but, uh, oh, I know what it's called. I can't think of it right now. Anyway, so now you're gonna go through here with your favorite scraper and you're gonna scrape all that double-sided tape off, which I'll do another day. And yeah, so now we gotta, trim piece here it's in one piece it's in good shape we broke only two of the tabs off they're on the end good news is we may be able to fabric cobble something or worst case scenario we drill this hole all the way through on the back and then we can do like they did on that car where they took a great big carriage bolt and stuffed it in that hole right there and then we just tighten up the carriage bolt on the back. I think there's a, a weld back there, actually. Yeah, right there, there's a weld right there. So, no, it actually, it's this one right here. That's the weld. So, yeah. We'll have to figure it out when we get there. So, I hope this was informative. And stay tuned for the next part of this video. I think we're going to do a part two where we hang the door on the car. We're gonna show you how to take the old door off without breaking anything and putting the new door on. And then we're gonna load the glass with the door on the car. So we're gonna show you how to put the glass in it with the door on the car. Because not everybody's gonna take their door apart just to take the glass out. At least I wouldn't think so. So we'll see you on the next one.